down. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works that hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, I power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Oh, what I'm telling you, I mean, it just to stop and think about all of the things that God has done and just start contemplating them. Oh, I mean to tell you, I mean, I heard that song before, of course, but, you know, I mean, it was just another solo, you know, a lot of times a preacher would be singing it, you know, and. <laughs> and uh, or you know occasionally some soloist uh you know it was just another you know the song you never really stop and think but then when you start really becoming receptive to god and the receptive of his healing power and go to prayer all the time all day long and everything and and really trying to receive from god you start thinking you know all the, this big wide universe and the stars and the planets and all of everything from the a, a smallest atom uh, uh, to the quantum particles, everything else and the human beings and all the billions of human beings there are and the animals and everything else. And start thinking about all the things that God made. And then you start thinking about all the things that God did uh, and how he sent Jesus Christ to this earth to die for our sins and how he loved the world to do that and and just start trying to take in all of that you know and then you just start singing like that song did how great thou art how great thou art uh, my and he said in my soul and also wonder you know i never even thought about that before i don't guess uh, you know years ago when i would hear the song uh my soul in awesome wonder, consider all the worlds our hands have made. <laughs> you know, it's alternately the worlds and all, and the works our hands have made. But it's both of them, of course. And so, but my soul in awesome wonder, you know, how does that? When I in awesome wonder, consider. Okay, yes, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. You see, that's what, you know, we're missing a lot of times. We, that awesome wonder about all of the stuff that God has made. Oh, we see it, you know, and we admire it and everything. But having that awesome wonder you know, really just looking upon it with great awe and just thinking how great all of that is. I mean, it's just something that we really have to grow into to appreciate. And, you know, like they say, you have to see to appreciate. You really have to spiritually understand in order to appreciate how vast all of the things that God has done really is and really are. And what all of the significance and the implication and the and the importance of it all is. And the importance of understanding how vast is God and how vast are the things he's done and what it all means to us. It's just so marvelous that it's just it's just a miracle, you know. I mean it's a miracle what all God has done, you know, like the song Miracles, you know, the song that says uh I uh 
believe in miracles and then the one that says it took a miracle yeah and all those songs about about god just it's just an awesome power but we are studying now it is 4 p.m central standard time in the united states of america and at 4 p.m every day seven days a week if the the grace of God and the power of God sustains me. It will. I will be here at 4 p.m. every single day, seven days a week, teaching this through the New Testament verse by verse survey. And uh, we will beginning be beginning with Matthew as soon as we get this last little bit of Philippians finished and go through the New Testament. And so you need to be here every every single. Uh, afternoon at 4 p.m. for that and right now we are in Philippians the book of Philippians uh, verse uh, uh, we're in uh, chapter 4 verse uh, 15 I believe it is right after that uh, do all things which strengthen me verse 30 so yeah 15 and he said he said that uh, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving but ye. And of course, you know, Macedonia, that was a separate country at that time called Macedonia over there near Greece. And uh, so he had left there to go, I think, to Greece. And, and uh, but that nobody, while he was there in that Macedonia place, uh, like a, an area uh, outside of Greece, it, he said no, none of those except the Philippians would ever uh, ever communicated with him, ever sent him any, any offerings or took care of him or asked him how he was doing or any of that kind of thing. And so uh, he was so appreciated to the Philippians for taking care of that, uh, that business and remembering that he was a senior missionary and he was to be a, an apostle and so forth of the gospel, a founder of uh, found one of the founders as so to speak of this you know missionary work and gospel uh spreading the gospel to the world and one of the first founders of it and so it says uh, that for even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity when when he was in Thessalonica the Philippians sent to him uh not because I desire a gift but I desire fruit that may abound to your account you know in other words they needed to see that they had a part in that missionary work and that the people the souls that were saved and the people that were healed and the people that were led to christ and and uh and received from christ and all those things as a result of paul's ministry uh would abound to those who were giving unto his ministry and they had a part in the evangelism. I mean, like, just like us, we have a part in the evangelism of the world when we support our missionaries around the world. And when we pray for them and send us monetary support and other support and communicate back and forth with them and read their letters and send them letters uh, of encouragement and all that. And so he's talking about that and saying that, the, that they, uh, Thessalonica, uh, uh, when he was in Thessalonica, the Philippians communicated with him. Uh, and uh, so he was, uh, you know, praising them for that. And he says, uh, he did, it's not that he desires uh, any kind of gift, but he just wants them to know that they can plant those seeds uh, uh, like that, you know, and uh, be a part of that, that uh, missionary work. But I have all and abound, I am full, having received of... Uh, Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable and well pleasing to God. So he received a lot of things from them, uh, and then God took care of the rest of it some other way. But there was a lot of churches that didn't participate, you know. And so you know, we have churches today that don't really participate with the you know missionary on with the mission field in other countries. They just pretty much just stay in their own area and deal with that. And a lot of times they suffer you know in their growth as a result of it. You know, when we give to missionaries and support missionaries, our own church grows a lot 
Uh, that's just a principle of the way that it works. Uh, it causes our church to grow, our local area to grow, when we support the missionaries that are going around the world. And then it for sure uh, substantiates and, and grows the gospel. And that is, reforms a, per, uh, lifts a standard of righteousness around the world and protects all of us. And so every every single Christian on the face of the earth benefits from uh, those missionaries that are going into those foreign lands and putting their life in danger in order to win souls. And so he wants that them to understand that they have a part in that fruit being produced from that tree of that gospel being spread into the world. And so he says, uh, uh, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, he says, oh, he says, given to the, the missionaries and know that if you give a little bit of money or a little bit of other goods or services or whatever to that mission field, that God's going to make that up and he's going to supply all of your needs. And so you don't have to worry about your needs being supplied. You don't have to be all fearful and doubtful and thinking, oh, if I, if I give a few dollars to the missionary bill, then, you know, maybe I won't be able to get my bills paid or something like that, that God is going to supply that, <laughs> you know. I mean, you walk into the store you know, at exactly the right time, and, and that loaf of bread will be marked down half. <laughs> Wow, I've had stuff like that happen. And uh, everything that you buy will be 40 or 50% off maybe on that one day that you happen to walk in. And so God will supply in one way or the other. And so, uh, and uh, <laughs> if it don't, you can force it <laughs> by, uh, by doing a little more shopping around, you know. That works too. And so it says... Uh, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. He said, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. And all the saints salute you. Chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. He says, you know, it was written to the Philippians. This letter was written from the Philippians uh, to Rome, uh, from Rome by Epaphroditus. And so uh, Paul, well, let's see, written to the Philippians. From, evidently was in Rome at that time. You know, so, uh, and so anyway, so we uh, finished that book of Philippians and then we will be going to next time to uh, the book of Matthew and starting off the book of Matthew there you know with the birth of Christ and all the, all of that and so that'll be a marvelous study and we'll take that up on uh, that up at 6 p.m. tonight and uh, so we need to need to talk about the, the way that he, he said now unto God and our father uh, be glory forever and ever and salute every saint in Christ Jesus. And so he says, uh, to, you know, in other words, the brethren which are with me greet you. And the salutations, you know, that uh, grace and peace, you know, when you run into other Christians, you know, grace and peace and the love of Christ to you, uh, a brother or sister. You know, we salute you because you are a fellow brother, a fellow sister in Christ. And, and we, uh, Consider you, we give you the honor, a great honor, and salute you. And just like the, in the military, they salute. We have a certain salute that we do with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we will take back up in Matthew at 6 p.m. And I will pray now for all of those uh, uh, diseases that you may have or illnesses or slight little problems. And Lord, dear God, that you would just root out all of that cancer and all of the 
uh, metastasis uh, from anyone that may have even the least bit of cancer. You take it out now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, and all their God. Whoa, just touch people's lungs and give them perfect breathing, perfect tubules, uh, uh, perfect bronchial tube. Take out all inflammation of the bronchial tube. Oh, dear God, just relieve them of all COPD. Oh, dear God, relieve them of all emphysema and any kind of uh, effect of COVID-19. Just do away with that bug. And oh, dear God, the viruses and any kind of virus, any kind of viral infection, Lord, just root it out now in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus. Oh, praise God. I know it's going. And now we pray in the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, that you will touch people in their, uh, in their uh, kidneys and give them perfect order in their kidneys, perfect harmony, perfect order and harmony in their pancreal function and in their liver function. And Lord, just root out all alcohol, uh, results of alcohol and hepatitis and other things and give them perfect liver function. And Lord, now we pray that you would heal people of all back pain, all arthritic pain, all rheumatoid arthritis, all skin diseases, and all inflammation and rashes. Oh, dear God, that you would just heal people of shingles and heal people, dear God, of of lupus and heal people, dear God, of the effects of lupus and the dear God of the effects of, oh, oh dear God. God of multiple sclerosis, spina bifida, dear God of all that scabies, uh, uh, skin disorders, and Lord, dear God, that you would just heal people, oh, of osteoporosis, and give them good, strong bone, good, strong, healthy bones, good, strong, healthy joints, that they may be able to get up out of the wheelchairs and get up out of there and throw away them, the crutches and be again to dance in the spirit and praise the Lord, oh, with that dance and with the leap and with the praise and with the shout. Oh, and just they pray that they will be able to do that. And Lord, dear God, they will feel that great joy and power. Oh, that joy is just, just a, a thousand times greater than any drug. And they'll be able to lay down the cocaine and the heroin and the crack and all oh, the, the marijuana and the pot. And, oh, dear God, a hash of every kind. And dear God, that they will just be able to lay down that uh, all the opioid drugs and all peanut barbitol, all meth, all methamphetamine. Oh, dear God. God, that they would be able to de- lay down that cafe, uh, that, uh, well, too much cafe, and lay down the nicotine. Oh, dear God, that they'll be able to walk off from those cigarettes and never turn back. Oh, dear God, that they'll be able to walk off from those bottles and never turn back to alcohol again and feel that buzz and feel that great. W- wonderful rush of the Holy Spirit coming in that is a thousand times greater than anything they can get from a drug and just lead them, dear God, up into a high mountain of joy and they may rest in that eagle's nest of thy power and upon thy wing and so in a place that is so much more joyful than anything in this life and, and they'll be above all depression and forget there ever was such a thing as depression or feeling oppressed or feeling obsessed with these earthly habits. Lord, ask all these things in the name of the Holy Son Jesus Amen, amen, amen. Praise God and protect all of our little pets and everything. Oh, oh that's such a, that is such a cute dog. Oh, and we thank you, dear God, for, that you will protect us and our pets and of every kind and all of our animals of every kind. In the name of the Holy Son, Jesus, amen, amen.